Today we've got a most wonderful, wonderful meat pie with super man appeal. And there are a couple of things that we're doing that is different from the usual classical way of doing a stew or a pie or a casserole. First of all, the meat you choose is vitally important. We've used a piece of brisket here and asked the butcher to debone it and to trim off the excess fat and to give it just that little bit of taste, but not a kidney taste. We use one lamb's kidney and this lamb's kidney was just split in the middle and we cut out all the white membrane on the inside of the kidney. And the meat simply now gets cubed with a nice big cook's knife. Here we've got it. The cubes are about two, three centimeters square. And then we've also cut up the kidney and the kidney just goes mixed in with the meat. Now at this stage, no seasoned flour, no browning, no nothing. All you do is in your saucepan, you take two nice big onions. You chop them up sort of medium, not too fine. Don't have to kill yourself with work here. They go in, make a bed with the onions so that the onions cover the base of the pot. On top of the onions, we now simply put the meat down. No need to brown. And in fact, the browning toughens the meat because the heat is too aggressive. Meat, like all good men, like gentle treatment. Then we use the stock powder, and I'm going to use the beef stock powder, and we use two tablespoons of beef stock powder into three cups of water. Now you simply pour that over. And then to tenderize that meat a little bit, we're going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. So balsamic vinegar is in. You cover this with a tight, tight lid and then it goes on the lowest heat so that you just have a little bubble. Simmer that meat for about three hours until it's absolutely fork tender. After three hours of simmering, we're just going to check that it is fork tender. And we're going to thicken it slightly with either corn flour or potato flour. We've used potato flour here just because it's got a cleaner taste. We'll just give that a stir. And then we'll turn off the heat and add, first of all, the pepper sauce. Then we'll add the tomato sauce. Worcester sauce and some lovely fresh thyme that we picked in the garden this morning and then lastly the garlic pepper seasoning two teaspoons of that right and now we can stir that all together and then you can check the seasoning just to make sure that you are happy with, with the flavor and if anything you need to adjust or just add anything further. Okay, to save time you can prepare your meat a day in advance and take it to this stage and then what you do to carry on is you add your oil and butter to a preheated pan, which I've done here, just waiting for that butter to melt, and then you can add your sliced mushrooms and just saute them lightly until just before they start drawing water. Right, and then what you can do is remove them from the heat and place them in a, onto a plate and you can just give them a seasoning with uh, your um, chili and garlic seasoning. Just season them well with that. Well, here we are. 
we've dished up this beautifully cooked meat into the pie dish and we've put, I've just used a little dish that I've got here, filled it with water to support the pastry. And these mushrooms that Elizabeth cooked so beautifully, it's a good idea to just put the mushrooms, whoops, you're not supposed to go there, baby. Put the mushrooms over there on top of the meat so that when you dish it up, you have a lovely piece of mushroom just under the pastry. This is our sour cream pastry. The recipe is on the website. I've prepared it, wrapped it first of all in cling film and then in a piece of greasewood paper. So here we are, sweetheart. And now I just put a little bit of flour on the work surface. Flour dredger is a nice thing to have when you're working with pastry. And oh, it must feel right so that it... And in order to roll the pastry out, the trick is to use light little rolls, <clears throat> that kind of thing. And you always work from the middle. And keep the pastry loose. What we're aiming at here is a pastry must be bigger than the dish that you want to cover. Now don't try and lift the pastry. Simply just roll it over the rolling pin. Put your dish down in front of you. There you are, darling. Just roll over nice and slow. Good. The pastry needs to relax. If you stretch the pastry, it'll seriously shrink back in the oven. So, just like a big blanket, fold the pastry on top of the pie. Now I need to make a couple of small strips and a pizza wheel. Actually the very best tool to use here. So you've got this little blanket folded back and you glue the pastry onto the dish with some egg. You first of all put this false piece in on the side. Now what I need to do is to cut off the surplus pastry around the edge. Now a very good idea to do that is to use a mixing bowl, put it upside down, put your pie on top of that and just use a knife. Go like that. Now, to give it a little bit more sex appeal, we're going to crimp the edges. To do that, you put your thumb down on the pastry and with your one finger, you just push and pull. Now, to do a pretty little decoration is roll out your pastry. This is a good way to use up the leftover bits. And then cut them with a pastry wheel into diamond shapes. So these little diamond shapes we can make into leaves. I'll just put the center vein in. Don't go all the way through. And then you use the back of the knife just to make the leaf indentations. There you are, sweetheart. I love playing like this. Then we paint this lady or gentleman, whatever you want to call the pie. Final coating of egg glaze. Then you just put your little leaves on them. There, twist them a bit. Let them stand up so they're not so flat. So this is the pie before it gets baked. And here we have it. After it's baked with a beautiful, rich, aromatic, meaty filling. Bon appétit.